Hello, fans. How you doing? It is the 6th of October 2018. Uh, mainly update video, sort of all sorts of areas. Um, not quite sure I'm ready to make this video, but I've got some time and so figured I'd just do it. So I guess the main thing is the what, what I was saying in my last video about how I was expecting something concrete to happen sort of in the latter part of September um, and I said it might be subtle and that <clears throat> as women are the ones who make things happen and they're just coming up from the the, the, the as low as they can go in the in the yearly thing and <laughs> it just sounds like what the fuck is this guy saying I can't understand a word well because this this video is mainly for those people who have watched my videos over the years um, the five of you or ten of you I don't know Because I yeah, a lot has been changing in my noggin. You know, I was I was on a journey, uh, sort of helped kick started with all the information AJ Miller was putting out there. And then I kind of got my own journey, um, sort of just believing everything that I felt and the thing is, you feel something, you then interpret it. So it was... <clears throat> so yeah, so at the moment I'm sort of thinking, right, I had that feeling. And what did that mean? For example, I, when I got into contact with God, Father from above, and I'm getting the feeling, you're the one, you're the one. But just like if the sun shines on you, is kind of that sort of feeling. The sun is shining on you. So sure, you might look over there and see somebody else enjoying the sun and clearly the sun is shining on them too, but you don't feel what they're feeling. You feel sun shining on you. And I think that's how I misinterpreted what God was saying to me. I didn't misinterpret it, I just sort of mumbled it up with what's going on in the world and with everybody else and made two and two into five and sort of assumed, oh I must be the one, I'm, I'm the one who, the Christ or whatever and yeah, so I do feel, you know, a bit hard to look you in the eye to be honest because so whenever I've been telling you something, I know this, I look you in the eye, or the camera, and I, and I tell you this truth of mine, right? Now you probably knew at the time, I don't know, you know talking a load of shit. Um, and, and yet, yet, I still, sometimes when I sit and meditate and have to feel a feeling, I still have to be that one for the feeling to work. So, oh, still a bit confused. Like I said, probably not ready to make this video. Oh, but yeah, thought I'd do it anyway. Um, something did happen, 28th of September, big old earthquake and tsunami, Indonesia, quite a bad one, killing lots of people. Um, I had a look at the earthquakes going, well, looked at some graphs that would show the number of earthquakes that each year, and there wasn't a real big pattern of um, odd and even years so much, but, I mean, 1984 was a massive one, loads of earthquakes, uh, that's when St. Helen blew up. Um, which is an even year. 
lots of women would have been down and anyway but uh, then I did think that you know in the last 50 or so years there have been things which might have affected women even in their up year and also I've thought about that when you're on your up year you know that could be the time when God gives you the challenging things to do like you get those harder challenges when you're up so that you can deal with them Oh, it's just so much, it's too much to talk about. Um, we, like, again, I'm speaking to you guys who listen to my shit. We, and it's pretty clear that um, we go back six or seven years. Things shocked us more. You know, see a massive tornado or, you know, and... Uh, and we got used to it, didn't we? You know, now we see pictures of hailstones this big smashing through car windows. And yeah, you know, massive flood with buses and cars <laughs> floating away down further. Like, yeah, you know, and <clears throat> and I think that's good because you know, imagine if like suddenly now major shit happened and we hadn't have had this period before where we've got used to stuff you know we would go into into shock into panic uh, so I guess it's good that we're just getting used to it you know nothing really could shock us much now um, yeah propaganda is the big thing I'm sure I've said this before but they're really sticking it out now and I think they've gone too far I think there's a case of you know you give someone enough rope and they'll hang themselves and I think that's what these the propaganda machine is now going to I think they've gone too far in accusing Ronaldo of uh, raping someone I mean there's a guy who does not need you know he must have women falling over him all the time like how, you'd almost think it could be impossible for him to rape someone, being the person he is. So I think they've gone too far, and his answer was brilliant. I can't remember it word for word, it was put really well. Um, but basically saying he's going to be completely calm throughout this investigation, he's got nothing to hide, nothing to fear. You know, just the way he put it, it's really good. And I, I don't know if I've said this before, but come on, look. Like, you've got the Me Too movement, it's an organic thing, it happens. And then the propaganda machine kicks in. They want to thwart this. Because, you know, the paedophile ring or whatever doesn't want to get caught. So what's the best way to do that? Accuse, falsely accuse people. Um, so that, you know, and then maybe eventually it comes out that they were falsely accused and then they're going to have to do something about it. So, look, we can't just have this media frenzy where someone gets accused and then, you know, suddenly they lose their job and everything else. You know, we're supposed to live in an innocent until proven guilty. But the wrong people are getting off because, you know, uh, they got the right lawyers and stuff like that. Harvey Weinstein, I think, you know, the things we heard... Look, we can hear the truth, okay? So, you know, the propaganda machine will be in operation pretty much on everything. You know, trying to make out Russia, that they're evil, that Putin's evil, you know, and... And that's when you can, like, feel in your heart what's truth. You know, so... Right, I... I recently, you know, I've been... Trying to, you know, I, I realise that I've achieved something in this last few years of meditating. I've, I've got answers and I've satisfied my curiosity to a certain point. And I wanted to try and sort of do something with it because not many people are watching my YouTube. So I, I contacted some, well, tried to contact some uh, f philosophers at Oxford University. Well, first of all, I thought there was a philosophy competition, so I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll try and enter that, and I'll try and, uh, I'll, I'll try and write something. 
Um, but then I realised it had already happened, it was back in March, so it was too late. Anyway, I'm going to read it. Don't worry, it's not too long. Our universe, our universe, this universe. What is it and how did it come to be? Pretty philosophical question if you ask me. I, I'm going to have my dig at the philosophers afterwards. Our universe is a being. Or more accurately, it is two beings in a symbiotic relationship. More accurately still, it is two sets of two beings. Probably sounds confusing. I will explain. The first set or pair of beings I referred to are the true owners of this universe. Every single proton and photon in this universe is the physical manifestation of this being, aka God. One is masculine and one is feminine. The second set or pair I referred to is the one love, the thing that has always been and could never not be that sustains all there is. This being is also a duality with one being masculine and other feminine. The way these two sets or pairs exist in a symbiotic relationship is that the first pair is a container and the second set fills the container. This universe came into existence when it was created within another universe, a higher universe. And so too, our universe has created universes within itself. At the centre of every galaxy is an enigma we call a black hole. If you were to enter a black hole, you would be in a new universe, a lower universe. The universe, therefore, is a pair of souls, sustained by the one love, and has created billions of new universes, pairs of souls, a.k.a. us. I then write a couple of pages of arguments, but I'm not going to read that out. Uh, this is a, this ha that's helped me actually because um, I see that um, the difference between mother and father God is yes their containers are going to be different on some sort of level but they're the same they're you know they're the left and the right of the same whole and the the one love that fills the containers is male and female. So for the male side, the male side I imagine as as a white light, and the female side I imagine as rainbow light. Um, sort of, yeah. And um, so the only difference between me and my soulmate is that I'm filled with the white, the 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 male one love, and she's filled with the female one love. Anyway, is that helping? <laughs> By the way, things are going terribly on who I thought was my soulmate, and I'm just not knowing at the moment at all, but I'm just sort of, because I've been waiting four years, I was sort of told four years, and again, so that thing, whatever told me, I have to now think, well, maybe that was just bullshit. And, um, yeah. So that's, that's the one thing that really isn't going to plan or anything, and what's been working out pretty well is, is my own sort of personal relationship with, with God, that's actually come back on pretty strong, with, particularly with Father God. Um, I guess we go through these, you know, at the beginning it was Father God and then I got into Mother God and then a bit more Father God and then Mother God and, you know, so I suppose, you know, taking it in turns to try and sort me out and that's what they're doing with all of us, trying to sort us all out. Oh, I'm seeing, oh, there's so much. 
<laughs> go on for days probably. So much. Um, so I was saying, there's something I was seeing that I might be wrong about. Another thing I might be wrong about. In that um, I was sort of saying that, you know, Adam and Eve, 6,000 years ago, and this is God's plan and it's all going to come to this sort of point and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm starting to question that. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if God's plan is a little bit more sort of um, suck it and see type uh, with us. Um, but I am seeing strongly that we would have existed for billions of years. And that in the very, very beginning of our soul's life, and we were doing simple things, coming to earth, living in simple one cell things. I mean, I haven't had any memories of this or anything, it's just theoretical. But I have sort of glimpses of memories of perhaps being an animal. And a bit more of a glimpse on a previous life. Uh, I don't remember if I did a video and I was just, it's how I meditate, how I do the event. I was I'm meditating unbeknown to me I got into this uh, vision of me being like a, a hairy ape <laughs> or you know close to that and I, last night I was listening to a talk by Graham Hancock that he did in 2016 making a case not for aliens but a, a, a human civilization that was uh, had all the technology 10,000 years ago that kind of nearly got wiped out and that the few remnants of them hang around. Now I don't agree with Graham on that but I agree that it probably wasn't aliens or what do we call aliens anyway I still think it's the God's helpers and yesterday I was getting glimpses of this previous life where it wasn't like I could see any of God's helpers, but very much knew the pre there was a presence. And um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because at the moment I'm just sort of thinking, was it about this or was it about that? But what I'm starting to see is that we, as God's children, may have had much more effect upon what... Um, what what was happening in our development. Let's take the dinosaurs for example, because this is when it came to me, like... So we had the dinosaurs, right? You imagine we're all being dinosaurs and we're biting each other's heads off and stuff like that. <clears throat> and um, then there were little mammals around. Now, did some of the... did some souls get to a certain uh, point in their improvement in love or whatever that they no longer desired to be a dinosaur and and something else was created almost in the sense that we God's children created ourselves the next level of being that we were going to be and when enough of us were at that level where we were going to be these little mammals um, probably a diff slightly different way of life than the dinosaurs, you know, maybe a bit more family orientated, uh, getting together in groups and soci sociability. Because at that point then God intervenes and goes, right, yeah, these lot are on something new to help them. I'm going to send down a comet now, take out, the, take out most of these big dinosaurs, and um, we'll be moving on in a sense. So, and then if we compare that, maybe so something happened 12,000 years ago, you know, was that another similar thing or was that different? I'm not sure. But let's say right now, if there were, I was thinking, are there any beings on the earth now that are sort of more advanced than humans? And I couldn't really think of anything, but it reminded me a bit of what I've been doing for the last four years. Sitting down and feeling emotions and opening my heart and 
feeling things on, on a soul level. Is that almost, in a sense, changing my being? I, uh, I'm like a, you know, a human who uses tools and makes things and da 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 da. Now a, a human that's doing other things. And will that, in a sense, have an effect? Oh God, you know, because I can't see how... I'm really struggling to see how civilization, the way it is, is going to evolve into something better. Because it's all dependent upon hierarchy. Civilization needs hierarchy. It needs its workers. You know, and and we either need, you know, live to live in this society, you know, we either need to be one of those workers or or we're not gonna feel too great because we're not contributing and stuff like that and it's difficult you can't just go off and live in the wilderness and you know like I mean all the internet so possible you know if it's possible both ways are possible it's possible that God might see this as a time to intervene send another comet down or it's possible that computers, social networks, or whatever, are going to awake something in the humans which is going to bring about change. Don't know. Man, this is a real rambling video, and if you're... if you're not listening to my stuff, you know, probably just sounds like I'm waffling. And I haven't been, I'm going back and forth. So I apologise for that. But that's the way it is. It's the way I do it. So, I got a bit of a gripe against these philosophers. So I sent what I read out on that piece of paper. I sent that to 18 uh, philosophy professors at Oxford University. And <laughs> only one replied... And I sort of added, um, you know, it'd be good to meet up and discuss, discuss this theory that I've got, which I know is right. And just a woman saying, sorry, I can't meet up with you. Anyway, if you look at, right, if I'm, I wouldn't want to study philosophy. Oh, I mean, they've got philosophy of morality, philosophy of this, philosophy of that. I think they've completely lost touch with what philosophy is. Surely philosophy is like Plato and shit. You just sit down and you think about what's what. And, you know, mysteries, try and work out the mysteries. But just... And, and another thing, if you want to study philosophy, you have to read a lot. You have to read shitloads of other stuff from other philosophers. Now, I can kind of see why they want to do that, because then, you know, you don't get this thing where people go, Oh, I found it! I've got the answer! And then they go, Oh, yeah, somebody else thought of that back in 1965. And they wrote all about it. Look, you could have saved your time there. Just read that. But they, they at least they're exercising their philosophical mind. So, I, in a sense, I think if you do philosophy, it should be the number one rule. Don't read any other philosophers. Yeah. So, and I'll try and find out if they've got some sort of debating forum online. They haven't. So, I, I just think they've, they've lost touch with what it is. You, you know... Fair enough, right, with uh, science and maths and stuff, you know, someone discovers something you knew and the universities contain all what's been found out so they can teach it on to the next generation. That I get. I don't... not with philosophy. And so I'm getting the word philosophy wrong and mixing it up with something else, but... But as usual, I think I'm right. Now... So this thing, I said in my video, we're all the one. We all, deep down, if you're totally honest with yourself, you think you're the one. 
Uh, I'm just saying that that makes so much sense with so many things. Like why people are the way they are and most you know, most people won't give it the, the, the time of day and start thinking, oh, I'm the one, like that. They won't do that. They will very much, you know, play pacified to others around, you know, it'd be their secret, it'd be their secret sort of thing inside them that they think, but they'll think it. And you, I could just, I'm sorry, I haven't got any examples at the moment, but I'm just seeing so many, um you know, in in history, why people act the way they do. I mean, Hitler and the whole, all the Germans themselves. Uh, same again, Winston Churchill and all the British. You know, it was it was that sort of thing. Football match. You know, why why does one team feel they've got the the right to win? And I I think in a sense that's the secret. You know, you want to go on that football pitch believing you've got some sort of divine right to win this game and you're going to help your team do it. I think that's actually when the when it works well. Hmm. But then depending on people's moralities that might affect the way they do. You know, they might feel they have a right to cheat or a right to play dirty. They, it could come out like that. It doesn't necessarily have to. That all depends on you know, the person themselves. Uh, so, alright, so, okay. I am remembering the things I wanted to talk about. Heart palpitations. Um, I've, 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 um, to link towards the event stuff, you know, what we've been calling the event, uh, since February this year. Around 22nd, shit was happening every month. It does seem to have faded a bit, but I do feel that's got something to do with the, the, the enthusiasm for it, the hype for it has waned. And I see that going to come back as women start to raise up, sort of Christmas after Christmas. I think we're going to see some things happen. And I, I've had some, uh, there's a girl, Alana Green, she does some videos, she's she's talking some good stuff and she is telling us about uh, things, the major things that have happened in her life and it does seem like she has the power to manifest stuff like she made a t-shirt appear or something that should have been in her house and you know so I think women possibly potentially do have that power so that would be interesting to see right but <clears throat> So I was having, um, around these times, I think it was, it was definitely one in March and April, May, maybe, you know, heart palpitations. And, um, and they were, they were happening in sort of this sort of condensed sort of period towards the end of the month. And it, it did feel, they felt okay. They didn't, they didn't worry me, but. I was getting some lately, and I was starting to think, worry, okay, you know, because these ones seemed a bit more random, like, when, when I'd get them, but they were, they were coming, I was having a thought, I wasn't necessarily meditating, so I was, I was having a thought, and I was there, and like, and then, so it's not really the heart, because the heart's like to the left, so it was right in the centre here, like a, <coughs> Excuse me. It lasts for a couple of seconds. It's like a blub 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 blub. Like, and you feel it like. So I was starting to think, mm, you know, maybe I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> well, it's smoking, and I think it's fine for me, and I might drop down dead any minute. And I was thinking, oh, come on, when people have heart attacks, they get all tense, they clutch their heart, and they. Wasn't like that. I actually like it. I realised when it comes, I actually like it. It was just I had a couple that were just sort of, just seemed a bit out of nowhere, a bit strong, and and I've had the thought that maybe they were ones that God just wanted me to feel. So it was best that they came at a surprising time, so that I wouldn't have time to sort of get tensed up or whatever. <laughs> And I was thinking this, and last night, 
I was having a dream and I got the heart palpitation you know, and I was feeling the buzz and I was and I was just I was sort of in that slightly negative mind of saying I'm going to die this is going to this is going to kill me and I felt it anyway and it was sort of normal how it normally has been and I was fine afterwards and I was like right okay so I didn't die I wasn't going to die it's not killing me and I sort of well I'd had the night thought the night before not in the dream, that I do like it. Because if I don't get any feelings in my heart for a while, I miss it. You know, that has been the ultimate thing is with meditating, is to is to get deeper and deeper and to feel in that heart. And I heard a girl doing a video the other day, and she was saying how she doesn't feel anything in her heart. She just has these horrible feelings in her stomach. And I could remember exactly being there, exactly being there when I had never experienced a feeling in my heart and and all, and all I had was like, you know, pain in my stomach or whatever and, you know, and, and I got to realise that these were stored up emotions, emotions that had been suppressed and so yeah. Um, God, I'm really Sorry, I'm sorry that I'm coming out with these so quick, but it's just come to my mind. And I was thinking, because I, I said in my last video, maybe making videos is preventing my, um, preventing me uh, doing stuff in meditation. And so as I haven't made but many videos at all lately, I've had long gaps without making a video. And it hasn't really helped that much. <laughs> so it was wrong of me to blame making videos. And in fact, I got I had a really strong meditation session, a really good one with Father God, when I was thinking about making a video. It sort of got me into it. And I think, in a way, making the videos and sharing what I've been doing has helped motivate me. Because I think, you know, sometimes you do need motivation. I was, I was getting into a stagnant area with a feeling... <laughs> And uh, I wasn't feeling the feeling, and it was going straight into pain, and you know, then me wanting to stop meditating, and so that that gets me down. If I have three sits, and each time, you know, after forty minutes or so, I decide to stop and get up without having had some major or good feeling or something, you know, that would get me down. I wouldn't, because I do feel like now, you know. I'm a meditating expert or whatever, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big thing for me now, you know, that my fulfilment, a big part of it comes from what I get during meditating. So it was getting to me, and um, I felt the extra motivation to hang in there, to, to stick it out, you know, have I got spirits with me, don't want to feel the feeling, you know, Possibly, right? And then, what is this feeling that I'm that's stopping me from meditating? And it's not, it's not always. You don't always notice that you that you're doing it, you know. And I thought about making a video called "It, it Doesn't Get Easier," in a sense that each new feeling is going to be. A, and I've said this before. It's it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a, another step, another learning thing. So it's always, you know, it's always the next thing can always catch you out, however expert you might feel you are. You know, you can always get caught out. Because we've always got stuff to learn, you know. Anyway, so what I started to notice was this, uh, the feeling was in my lower back and it was like apathy. The feeling was like apathy and it was a kind of a fear. And um, as soon as I had that thought, it was like, well, there's the answer, here's, a, here's what I can do to, to, to stop this, and, uh, and this sort of, uh, you see, it's, it's very hard to explain, I mean, all these feelings are hard to explain, because, you know, they're new, and, you know, so if I talk about there's a, a swelling in the lower back, it just, like a bulging in the, in the lower back, this, inside of me but at the back and 
and that was, you know, causing me just to want to start, oh, this is tiring, you know, suddenly I was tiring just sitting here with a straight back, but in a sense, because I've had fear there before, lower back definitely is a place for fear. So again, you know, I just know to feel it, just allow, embrace it, allow it, everything to come towards the heart, because the heart deals with it all. And, um, yeah. And again, I was one of the other thing that kicked it off as well was thinking about me being Christ, and that I had something to do, and that the evil stumbling blocks from this world must be taken away. And because I'd been doing that for a good few years, you know, and it'd been getting results, so I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> and um, yeah. Because I had stopped for a bit. And it seemed to make things happen. So, you know, not 100%, but just keep going with it. And, um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear if anyone else is had heart palpitations and do they like it I mean one thing I was uh, yeah coffee I wasn't sure if coffee had been causing it before because I switched from uh, I haven't had instant coffee for I might have had the odd one but I've been buying instant coffee I've just been buying the beans and grinding the beans and because I wasn't sure if the heart palpitations were the coffee but I've drunk coffee all my life, so, well not all my life, but drunk coffee. So I did, I was wondering at one point, is it the instant coffee? So I changed that, so clearly it isn't. Um, if they started to happen more frequently and stuff like that, I'd probably start to worry again, but I can't predict the future, I'm not going to go on about hypothetical things and just deal with what is. Live, live the experiment with truth. So, is there anything else? Um, don't know. Don't know. No, don't think there is. Oh, uh, well. So, did anything happen? No, no. So, did, wh did what I expect to happen happen? No. Does that mean it hasn't happened? No. But, is it probable <laughs> I'm wrong about <laughs> something? Yes. Um... <laughs> Is it, you know, the other seven, because this all, for me, this all had to do with, like, the so the February 22nd was the patience pair of planets in our universe. So if there's seven pairs of planets in our universe, we are one of those planets. So I still get a sense that there are others. I'm starting to doubt whether we'd all, whether it all time in to be at the right time, but timing. <laughs> Quite a, I've had a brilliant week with timing. I mean, like I say, in my relationship with God and what what I ought to be doing when I get up in the morning. I've not been smoking cannabis until the afternoon, and and, and getting on with stuff, doing stuff, and and noticing that you know if I if I get on and do the things I ought to do, God will bring me more, and then I won't have such a problem running out of money because that was starting to get to me. I'm, and I can't meditate very good when I'm running out of money. I'm worried about if I can pay the rent or not because that's just not not good. So that yeah, brilliant week with the, the the timing of things, you know. I went and did my gardening jobs that I was to do. I've done some work in the in the garden at my house, 
because uh, let, letting nature do what it wants is sort of burying me so I have to go out there and, and do stuff and I'm going to be very selective about what I cut and I'm going to really take it seriously I'm in, I'm, and I'm enjoying that and I'm seeing that okay so m the nature I'm being provided with is uh, it's not so much a complete thing on its own that it's going to provide this wonderful nature haven and all I have to do is walk through it quite twice a day. It's a bit more of a blank canvas and it allows me to tinker and get a bit involved. But trees are, oh, I'm really seeing that. Trees are, are something amazing. They, they, they do more than what we think. And, I, you know, you can feel a tree. They, their DNA is twice as long as ours. So I don't think we've ever been trees. I think trees are here as a balancing thing and but as a, to provide and lots of things, lots of things. So anyway, I've I've been a bit more productive and then like the jobs that I did to get money last week, computer jobs. They they all came like within a few hours. I got four jobs and and they all worked out and I did them and I got paid and it was over and done with. Like so I'd been out gardening, come back, checked the phone, hadn't had any missed calls. Next day, did some other stuff. Right, no missed calls, hadn't missed anything. And then I think it was Wednesday or something. Uh about to wonder what I'm gonna do, phone goes, job, blah, blah, blah. twenty minutes later, phone goes, job, blah, blah, right, go and do a job, come back later, have another phone or an email and it's another job, another job, right? That's how it went. And it was just you know, the timing of it. Like how I had to just how I had to just sort of go with the flow and yet it all worked out so well. Like so you know, is that that's part of our learning, and I guess God would be a, an expert at that. So, God's maybe going with the flow, doing what needs to be done, and it turns out that all these fourteen planets in the universe get to uh, um, some sort of significant realization point in the development of the soul at these set times. So, February to the patience planets. March, the Wisdom Planets. April, the Mercy Planets. May, the Justice Planets, and we're one of those. June, the Peace Planets. July, the Goodness Planets. And then August, the Faith Planets. A month later, September the 22nd, did all come in together and do this amazing thing? <laughs> no! No! I didn't really get much. A few heart palpitations. But like I can say, you never know. You never know if these things have occurred because quite often at the beginning they're very, very subtle and you won't necessarily hear about stuff. I mean, there were a few things on the news, like Labour saying that workers should have shares in the company I mean that would be a big change uh, you know we got we got Trump still succeeding Brexit still succeeding uh, there's that big tsunami on the 28th of September you know was that something it's hard to say it's hard to say you often sometimes don't know what things will lead to so anyway so, I guess the big moral of this video is, I don't know! <laughs> I don't know. The mind is pretty dumb. I think. The mind is dumb. The heart knows. The heart can be trusted. The heart is truth. And the mind is... is, is what, the, what the fuck is the mind anyway? Who knows? And does God still use a mind? Or just... The heart? Yeah. It's comforting to know that, you know, all all will be all truth will be known in the end. 
and you just got to go with your gut. But I'm, I'm feeling very, 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 very confident about my theory about the, the, um, the mood swings. The yearly, the monthly and the daily. Very confident about that. Uh, so yeah so um, yeah so thank you to all of you whoever you are who continue to watch my stuff I hope you know because that's what I think I think I need I need to tell them about the, the heart palpitations thing because maybe they're getting one. Maybe they think it, it just mean I'm having a heart attack. Maybe not. Maybe I'll find out and send thought feedback. No, mate, you better go and see a doctor. Well, I'm not going to. So, you want to tell me that? You can tell me that, but I'm not going to. Not in, in, if I was, if they were painful, if they were like, you know, making me fall over and stuff then maybe I would but I like them I like them oh do you like the jacket I'm not I'm sort of it's, it's a bit more of a house jacket at the moment Just keep me a bit warmer I don't want to put the heating on yet I'm such a skin flint um, I might get used to it. I might start wearing it out. Big old shoulders. <laughs> yeah. I thought it looked good from the side. What do you think? <laughs> do, do make me look important. Which is my best side? I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. The soulmate thing. I want my soulmate. I want my soulmate. But I do, I am feeling soulmate feelings. And I still think it's the same girl. But it looks impossible. It really, really looks impossible. So I'm thinking, am I wrong? Am I wrong? But the feelings, they're so, they've been so strong, they've been so deep, they've been so true. No, the feelings are right. And I can sort of, I can sort of think, okay, well, I can wait till the next life. I can. I could do, you know. Because I could still enjoy a relationship with a, a, a girl who's not my soulmate. But I just know that it probably won't last more than a few years. I've not had a relationship. Actually, my longest relationship was four years, but I was six years old at the start of that one. <laughs> so, I'm not sure I should count that. And I did cheat on her. I kissed her another girl <laughs> once but she cheated on me I think she kissed her cousin anyway <laughs> apart from that I've had a few month relationship things you know a couple of months few months in my teens and then I had a three year relationship I was sort of stretched into four years I think but it was we were just friends for like the last year and um, we couldn't have sex. <laughs> uh, she got too nervous and clamped up. <laughs> God, my luck, right? Anyway, and then uh, the woman I married, our relationship was only about two years. And that's it. Been single for ten years soon. Or is it ten years already? Yeah, but I, you know, it's alright. No, I do think um, I'll, you know, if nothing happens in the next few months, I'll probably start making a, I don't know what I'll do, I don't know. Again, hypothetical shit. Let's not think about that. Okay, so, uh, I wish you well. I wish me well. I wish the world well. We, we you know. Children of God, we want things to improve, and I think they will, so ciao for now.